Okay, so let me show you one quick project here. Does anybody remember, anybody remember this little house? I think um, this was a homeowner who had moved to this house because of a great school nearby. And a lot of people do this. Um, it's the giving nature of parenthood. You'll get used to it soon enough. Um, but basically, this lady did not like this house at all. And she moved to it because it was the only house left in the specific school district that she could afford and it would work for her. Um, and the problem with this house, as I saw it, was that the fenestration, the window pattern on the facade, made absolutely no sense. We had small windows and big windows and high windows and low windows. We had extra wides. We had, you know, all over the place. And the way the architect designed this house clearly was they designed the interior spaces, and then the windows just happen where they might. Um, a lot of homes run into this, especially with sort of less experienced builders that don't really know how to create a facade first and then make function work behind it. So we have to deal with this and deal with the fact that this lady, this poor lady, had an entrance that she had to walk up the stairs, unlock the door, walk down the stairs, open the door, and then walk back up. <laughs> Um, and that was her first, like, plea, please fix this. So um, here I am, I'm measuring, I'm trying to figure this out. And what a mess to try to measure this facade, by the way. Um, and so here's the thing. The first thing I do, similar to just drawing what I see, the first thing I do is I ask myself some questions. I'm not writing the answers just yet. I can barely read my handwriting, let alone answer the questions. <laughs> but I just write the questions down. It's interesting, answers change over time as we get influenced by different things and we see different um, uh, inspirations, we open different magazines, whatever they are, the answers change. But the questions are relatively stable. You know, what are the problems with the house? Again, I'm trying to identify the issues that can then be answered by design. So here I am, I'm writing my questions. I'm thinking of different ways of unifying this facade somehow with all these different sizes of windows. Like, I see one scheme I had here, which I didn't end up going with, was to do sort of a very modern concept of a ribbon that almost wrapped around all the windows. And this window was so low that it actually bumped down underneath it, but it set up that lower design datum. So who knows? What am I saying? Add dormer, portico? Who knows? But questions. Questions are important. And keep those questions handy. I always keep a sketchbook with me. In fact, it's in my bag right here. Um, and I've never thrown a sketchbook out. Partially, it's because of these questions. When I go back on old sketchbooks, I'm not just looking at design ideas. I'm also looking at the things that have intrigued me over time as to how to answer people's problems. And that, I think, is a very valid thing. So if you are considering a design project of your own, think of writing down those questions and then keeping them with you. So you know, I'm also trying to, those questions slowly become answers. I'm uh, thinking of different sort of facade um, changes and different plan changes. Clearly, I'm going towards some kind of courtyard here. And this is my design process. I always draw in plan, which is you know, what a bird sees, and also in elevation, which is what you see. Um, I think that design, in, that way you're almost designing in three dimensions at all times. Mm, so we get a little bit of an idea. And this was my final rendering for Vicky. Vicky Johnson was this house. Um, and you'll see what I'm trying to do is sort of this oblong shape. And the reason for that is because I needed to be close to the house on this side, but a little bit into the landscape on the other, so that we have two different courtyard areas with a different feel to it. This one's more enclosed and protected. It's got the trellis overhead, and this one's a little bit more revealed with a bench. And then, of course, the much bigger portico entrance that allows you know, not that awful process of up and down with the stairs. And it turned this house into that. Yeah, pretty. It was really nice. Um, this was the first time I used this color, which now in my firm we call Getting Gray. It's actually called Porpoise, um, and it's a Sherwin-Williams color. They don't pay me to say this, but it happens to be an amazing color. I use it all over and over again. And so that, there we go. This house turned into that. And one thing I always like to do is keep my sketches, like I said. And it's so nice, after you've finished a project, to look at those first little chicken scratch drawings and see how they turn into the real life, and see what changed, why they changed, to understand it both from an aesthetic point of view and also from a budgetary point of view. Often a lot of changes happen because of value engineering, but it's good to keep those things in mind as well so that you can apply them to future projects.